that that thing in the in the baby, the, not the baby, but the uterus. You just said that it. Is not I think I think you just admitted that I'm right. Now it's one thing to get defeated by an intelligent, quick-witted, and eloquent person in a debate, but when you can take the other person out of the equation altogether and own yourself, now that's quite an accomplishment and a sight to see. First, I want to start off by saying I disagree with everything you say. <laughs> Black Lives Matter, stop Asian hate, and leave trans people alone. What's wrong with you people? Here's my question. Why what did do you I say weaponize? about the Asians? I don't think I said anything about Asians. Listen to my question. Why oh, wait, wait, why she just come out firing just from the hip, just right off the bat before they even get into any sort of discussion, logical conversation? I don't know if that's going to be present, but Black Lives Matter, Stop Asian. Where is this coming from? Why so much hate and animosity in your heart? Aren't we supposed to be having like a Q&A session with Michael Knowles? Oh, boy. First, I want to start off by saying I disagree with everything you say. <laughs> Without Black even Lives hearing Matter, it. <laughs> Stop Asian hate and leave trans people alone. Here's my question. Why what do you weaponize? What about the Asians? I don't think I said anything about Asians. Listen to my question. Why okay. do you weaponize religion to justify your subjective opinions? How do you think I've done that? You say that God says, oh, there's men, there's a woman, and just leave that as that. Like, you don't represent religion because we don't live in a country where you can be purely pure based on your religion. Like you sin, everyone sins, if we yeah. can understand that. So trying to weaponize that against people and try to limit their rights because of what you think God said, God didn't speak to you. You don't well, know. God you don't speak know. In the Bible. He speaks to no, all of us no, and we can read his no, word in the Bible no, and we no, can go to church. No, no that, that no. is true. So what, what you're, you're uh, objecting to is that I've quoted the Bible and I've said uh, right there in the early chapters of Genesis, in the beginning God made man, both male and female created he them. And you're saying, Michael, why would you weaponize religion that way? But what have I do? all I've done is just quoted the Bible, and I'd be happy to have a conversation about 2,000 years of church history on this subject, and I'm happy to have a conversation about even pre-biblical or extra-biblical sources on it, on the hylomorphic nature of the human being. I'm happy to do She ain't even listening. Everything he's saying is in one ear, out the other. She's already made up her mind. She's not there for a discussion. He is being perfectly calm, composed, and, and generous. Just having her ask him a question and responding in the manner that he does but she ain't even there for it. She's not trying to listen. She's not trying to gather another information piece, another perspective, not trying to see it from the lens of somebody else. And she straight up lied. God didn't speak to Michael. He spoke to all of us as humans. There is no truth without God. The Bible, basic instructions before leaving earth, is God's word breathed out to those men. The authors of the Bible were image bearers of God, created in his image, male and female, designed to be with each other. That's the only two genders. You can't change it. You can feel whatever type of way you want about it, but it is the way it is. You got to deal with it. Stop, stop praying on these little kids. Stop pushing all these trans narratives and homosexual behavior, promoting sin and idolatry and all this wickedness. People are going to have to face that judgment. So we as Christians, we don't weaponize our religion. We call it out because we love people and we want to guide them from, to the kingdom and away from that wide path that leads to destruction, damnation, hell, fiery furnace forever. I don't want that for them. That's why I call it out. You can call it weaponization. I call it truth bombs. I'm happy to do that. That's not a weapon against any people. That's a weapon against falsehood. And so the, the only way in which I would turn religion into a weapon is against the devil. And that's what we all have to do because religion is a habit of virtue that renders to God what he deserves. That's the meaning of the word religion. And so I'm just reading the text and I'm practicing the faith and I'm telling you what the faith has said for 2,000 years. And you might reject it, but I think that it's true. I think religion is true. And you might think that it's false and you might have a different set of beliefs, but one of us is, at the very most, one of us is going to be right. <laughs> and so at the, at the very least, one of us is going to be wrong. And I just happen to be correct about this. <laughs> you know, I, I can you're wrong, respect, you're I can respect the confidence, but it came out of, it's just purely delusion. Okay, I, I, don't I think, respect, I don't think according to you. I respect, I respect religions, I respect people's rights, but trying to limit someone's rights by saying, well, I believe that God said this, so I'm going to block you from doing this, like abortion. People get raped, people get incest, and it's crazy traumatic situations, and it's very hard for a human to ask a human, oh, keep that baby because God said to. Do you, that do you, is impossible. Do you think We're it's hard to... No, it's not do you, impossible. Do you think it's hard to ask someone, hey, <laughs> it's what you should do. don't murder an innocent person, even if you want to, even if that would be convenient? I think that's it's what we're easy saying about because it. our fundamental beliefs are different. I don't think it's murder. I think it's 
that that thing in the in the baby, the not the baby, but the uterus. You just said that it. is not. I think I think you just admitted that I'm right. The baby. You accident, that's a, called a Freudian slip. Mm. And I think you just okay, proved chill, the point. Okay, chill out, chill out. But the thing in the uterus is not a baby. That's what I was trying to say. It's just a yeah, clump sure of cells. It's a tumor. Okay. It's a, it's a tumor. And trying to be like, and trying to be like, it's a baby. It's we just have fundamentally different belief systems, and I don't believe that. No, I don't think it's murder. It's not murder. Right, it's but murder. but the baby in the unlike a tumor, say the baby in the womb. It has the DNA of an individual human being that's different from the DNA of the mother, and the baby in the womb has all the characteristics of human life, and the baby in the womb grows, at a very early stage, grows to take on the form of an individual human being, and the baby in the womb left unmurdered will grow into a full adult-sized human being just like you are. So that would seem to be a, a difference between the baby in the womb and the cancerous tumor. So you're saying, well, I just don't believe that, but you obviously do believe that because you just admitted it because you called the baby a baby. You just don't... You don't want to acknowledge that reality because it's inconvenient. And I'm not, I'm not denying that there are inconveniences in the world and there's suffering and there are, there are all sorts of difficult decisions that people have to make, but that doesn't mean that there isn't a right and a wrong answer. And it doesn't even mean that you don't know what it is because you've admitted that you know what it is. Mm. Mm. Owned yourself. Oh, that was impressive. Could you imagine dealing with these people all the time? I mean, good night. I couldn't keep a straight face and I'd probably lose my cool listening to this evil stupidity time and time again. But just Michael's class and composure, his well-rounded, just caring about hearing the other person out and giving a logical perspective, connected brain stem, valuable thoughts that add to the to the discussion instead of just regurgitating all these talking points, all these these media narratives. She just goes on and on and keeps on spouting out these pro-choice slogans without actually bringing any critical thinking or or common sense to the table. And no original thoughts whatsoever from what I saw. Y'all may disagree. That's perfectly okay, but that's never a good sign. When you don't bring your own point of view to the table, when you don't have your own outlook on whatever the situation or circumstance is, You've been brainwashed. You've been handed these, these narratives and you're just pushing it. You have no backbone, no foundation in, in truth. And that's what happens when you don't grow up with God or you don't find God uh, down the line. Because I didn't grow up a Christian. I didn't grow up being saved. I grew up all over the place, living in sin, living in lust, thinking I was my own God. Truth was relative. It, people owed me something out here in the world. And it just the world was supposed to bend over backwards for me to get what I want. The world was not designed based on your convenience in mind. Life is hard. When you follow Jesus Christ, you will be persecuted. But there's a difference. Without Jesus, there's darkness. You wage that sin without a savior without a, a way out of, of this life when you die, it ends in death. With Jesus, there's eternal peace and salvation, and you don't have to lean on your own understanding because his yoke is easy, his burden is light, he'll guide your path, he'll be the lamp that guides your every step. So these people need to get on board. You Pray for it, y'all, because how can anyone call an unborn baby a cancerous tumor? That just blows my mind. It's ridiculous. Like, what a disgusting, twisted, and depraved view of life. Imagine becoming pregnant and telling the people in your life that you've got a tumor. It's, it's a baby. It's a, a life being developed and has been formed. at Life at conception, that's when it happens. You're going to try to twist that and... It's just demonic. It's disgusting. And it's not a zygote. It's not a fetus or just a clump of cells. It's a precious and unique human being who has half of the mother and half of the father. God knit that baby together and formed it in the mother's womb. Don't jump to the extreme cases of rape. That's something that the father will have to pay for. That sin, that demonic, dark, evil behavior. The baby's life, innocent, hasn't done any harm, hasn't sinned whatsoever. So the baby should not have to pay for the crime of the father. And if you didn't have a case of rape, which 99% of society that, that chooses to abort their baby didn't actually experience that. If you were adult enough to lay it down, then you can be adult and responsible enough to make sure that child is taken care of with you or with someone else. What it comes down to is they have no appreciation for life. They can't even see that they themselves were once a choice for their parents. And thank God her mama, my mama, your mama, they let us live and they realized murder wasn't an option and they loved us and raised us even if they had to go out and get a second or third job just to make it make it happen financially. And there's churches, there's all sorts of resources in the community to make sure that you're set up and, and able to, to raise that child. And if it does come down to it, you can put that child up for adoption. Give another family, a loving family that's in a position and, and does have the means to do so, give them a chance to love that child and bring that child up in the world. And you can still love that child. You may even have a relationship 
with that child when they're a little bit older if you and that family decide on an agreement that makes that possible. But under no situation or circumstances is control alt delete of an innocent life the correct decision. Any woman that goes through with the evil act of abortion, they should be held accountable legally and for sure will have to face God Almighty come judgment day, just like all of us will have to. But there's a difference. If you haven't repented of that sin, if you haven't confessed Christ as Lord and Savior and been baptized, then your heart hasn't been transformed. Then you're still living in wickedness and you still are of this world and not just in this world. There is no eternal peace and salvation for you. I understand we all make mistakes. I didn't grow up perfect. I'm not perfect. Never will be. Only Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the good shepherd is perfect. That's why repentance is needed. And all of our lives are valuable inside or outside of the womb. It doesn't matter if you're a man, a woman, black, white, rich, poor, good health or bad. Abortion is wrong. End of story. Pray for these people. It's sad. It breaks my heart when I see it, but they're lost. They're stranded. I've been there. Pray that they wake up. They gain some wisdom. They gain some experience. And most importantly, they find Jesus Christ, the way, the truth, and the life before it's all said and done. I love them. I love y'all. I pray that you pray for me and love me and mine. Either way, I'm still going to keep doing my thing. I'm still going to keep sharing the gospel. That's what I've been called here to do. So uh, if you got anything to add to this, let me know in the comment section down below. Let's keep this conversation rolling. And if you want to support the channel, make sure you subscribe hit that thumbs up button ring the notification bell so you get notified anytime i post a video just in case youtube forgets to let you know outside of that if you want to take it a step further make sure you go get some awesome clothes everything you see me wearing my wife has made it just like these awesome insulated tumblers all my other links are down below in the description section ways to support patreon buy me a coffee products i use all that sort of stuff but definitely head over to my wife's etsy store we appreciate it we love y'all until next time godspeed i'm gone